Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm sure you know that frustrating feeling as well. There's a perfect bird flying right at you, great light, great background, and then right in the perfect moment when you want to get the bird, maybe it's banking, you're clipping the wing. So frustrating. That might happen because you were a little bit slow tracking the bird or you just have too much focal length and the bird was that little bit too close. So frustrating and you might think, there's a ruined image, I have to delete it. But that's not actually true. Today I want to show you how you can easily fix photos with clip wings and make them into great final looking images and might actually salvage a lot of your images. And now let's jump right in and let me show you how to fix those clip wings. So for that I've prepared a series of white-tailed eagle images. These images actually turned out a little bit too dark, so that's something we have to deal with, but let's go back and look at that clip wing problem. So the bird was coming in, coming closer, was turning. This is already a nice photo, and then bang, it happens. I clipped the wing when the bird had the perfect pulse. So frustrating. There's usually two options when it comes to clip wings. We can either go back and forth, in the series of images that we've taken of the same bird in the same situation and see if there's a wing pose that we could actually attach to the top of this image. The other option is if there's no good wing pose available, you could try and see if you could grab the bottom part of the wing, flip it and attach it to the top, which would probably possibly work in this case, but because the feathers are a bit bent, I don't think that would work too well. So let's have a quick look through the other images and see if there's one that would work. And actually I think that part up here could work very well as an extension up there. So this is probably what I will do in this case. You could obviously also look through other images in your archive, find some feathers that would match that, but that's not something that I would want to do because then I'm feeling like we're really altering the scene now. In this case, I feel like if I grabbed a wing that was taken literally 0.1 of a second before the photo that I clipped the wing. I'm not really altering the scene. I'm just kind of fixing a problem that I had because my focal length was a little bit too long. I was a little bit too slow. So I feel like this still keeps the integrity of the whole scene. If there wasn't any wing from anywhere available here and I grabbed one that I took like five years ago, I feel like now I'm adding things, I'm changing things, which you could do. But personally, I feel like I want to kind of keep the integrity of the scene if I do something like this. And I really just want to fix something rather than really creating something new. To be able to fix something like a clip wing, we have to use Photoshop. There's basically no other program where you can do this properly because we will have to cut parts out, use layers and layer masks to all puzzle it together and then create a really nice looking final image. So in programs like Lightroom, there's just not something that you can do effectively there. So in this case, Photoshop and some basic knowledge of layers is required to be able to do something like this, but let me show you. And if you're a bird photographer and you're interested in bird image editing and improving your own bird photo processing, make sure to check out my masterclass and pro sets down there in the description where I teach you step by step how to improve your image editing, learn about image editing, and how to make your own images stand out. So make sure to check that out. So I've now decided that I will need these two images. So let me open these up in Photoshop. So first thing I do is lighten the image a little bit and then I choose one of my pro sets. My favorite one is usually the Vibrant Jack of All Traits or Vibrant More Contrast. Go with the Vibrant More Contrast. It's looking pretty good already. I think I can go a little bit brighter. See if we lift the shadows slightly, bring the highlights down a little bit, add a little bit more Vibrant. And then we just look at the sharpening. This image looks pretty sharp already, but I definitely want to mask it a little bit because I don't want to sharpen all the background. And I'll pull the radius back a little bit as well. So now I just press Control C and then Control V and copy those settings over to the other file. And then I'll open both of these files in Photoshop. So the next thing we need to do is actually create some space for us to work with up there. And we will need a little bit more of blue sky too. So what we need to do first is being able to move that bird around. So what I like to do is just make a copy of the background by dragging it onto the plus sign here. So now we can just move the bird freely around. And then I actually just want to crop it a little bit wider to add a little bit of canvas so we can maneuver around. And then what we also need to do is move the bird down a little bit. 
But now you can see we're actually missing sky. So how can we get some sky if we don't have a photo of an empty sky? And that's not what I would want to use. We now have to create a little bit of empty sky for us. You could brush it in, you could clone it in, probably doesn't work as well. So let me tr show you a very strange trick. To get myself a nice blue sky, I open one of the eagle images, select the bird with the patch tool, drag the selected area over to the blue sky, and that now removes the eagle from the image and leaves me with a nice blue sky. I clean it up a little bit and then I copy our sky and paste it onto the image with the eagle. And then rearrange the order of the layers. So the layer with the skies underneath the eagle now. So only the bit above the wing is showing. So next I need to blend this together. And to do that, I will need to make a selection of the bird so that I can only work on the background without affecting the bird. So I quickly do that with the magic wand because it's all blue. I just click onto the background. And once I've selected all the background areas, I need to feather my selection. So there's a slight edge and it looks better when blended. Select, modify, expand two pixels and then select modify feather two pixels and then I actually go ahead and save my selection you can simply do that by clicking any of the adjustment layers on the right hand side and then I unclick the eye so that layer is hidden and whenever I press control and with the left mouse button onto that hidden layer mask there now it will load that selection that I just saved and now I create a layer mask on this layer load my selection use my black brush and then I can just remove that line up here and create a beautiful looking bit of sky for us with that nice gray cloud here nice blue sky behind the bird there's a little bit of sensor dust here so i'll create a new empty layer use my clone stamp and then get rid of that so basically what I've done for now, I've created a little bit of new extra sky for us by using the other image. I removed the bird with the patch tool, then copied the blue sky over, put it underneath my top layer with the bird. Then I selected the background, made a feathered selection, saved that selection. And then I created a layer mask on the layer with the bird. And now I used the black brush, loaded the selection of the background, and just brushed over the two bits where the sky merged and I could see that line of the two images. And by using a lower opacity and clicking in there with the brush, I can actually remove that line and make it look like one beautiful, nice looking piece of sky. So now that we have that done, we actually need a part of the wing. To get the part of the wing, we can delete this layer where we deleted the bird. We have that one, we make another copy of that. And now we're gonna go in up here, just with the lasso tool and select a good chunk of the wing. What I do now, I want to create a new file with this. So I press Ctrl C, Ctrl N, create a new file, paste my wing there. And now I'll just go in with the magic wand again, select the background. It's all looking pretty good. What I want to do now is I go to select, modify, contract by one pixel. So it moves it slightly off the wing and has a little blue edge around it. Now I go select modify feather one pixel as well. And now I can, I can just press delete and my background is deleted and I have this wing looking pretty good already. We just have this annoying bit of blue here so I can just use, press E for the eraser. Just get rid of that. So there's our good looking piece of wing. I can now press Ctrl A and C, copy that over to this image and then press Ctrl V to paste it. And now we just have to put in a little bit of puzzle work and actually make that wing match the other wing. So I like to lay that over the top and then I like to lower the opacity so you can see how the things are meant to match up. And this bird has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven feathers from the top to this bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I know that from here I'll need to be somewhere around here for that to match. And then you're just dragging and turning this around until you find a good point where this matches pretty well. And if you hold down the shift key, you can move this without keeping the ratio. Whereas without the shift key, it always moves in the ratio. So then I'm just trying to line things up. So we have these prominent feathers over here, and then we can have a look if that might actually work. So we need to do another layer mask. 
white layer mask, black brush, and then we go to 100% for now. We just start to delete a bunch of these lines and what we don't need up here. Then we just need to find a good bit where this will match and this looks like a good natural match up here. There's actually this bit that we see there. So I go to the layer mask before and I'm just going to delete this little bit that's shining through underneath on the other layer. And so this is where it can get a little bit complicated in Photoshop with the layer mask, but this is exactly what I teach you in my masterclass as well. I explain layers in detail and how to work with them. But in this case, basically with the layer mask, I can remove and add whatever I want. So now when we zoom out, I think that already looks pretty good. What would you say? That was a pretty easy fix. Now just zoom in and make sure that all these edges are fine back on the layer mask of the wing. You see there's a few feathers that don't match up too well. So I'll just fix that and just try to find like a natural transition of feathers in there. Make that one a little bit bigger. And that's pretty much our wing fixed. Pretty cool, isn't it? So all I would do now is probably crop this in a four by five ratio. And then I run my normal editing steps on it that I also teach you in my masterclass, where I first select the background so I can treat the background and the bird individually. Then I use a few curve layers to brighten the background, darken parts of the wing, and I also change the hue of the sky because I think it's a little bit too cyan. Then I also work on areas like the eye brighten that a bit and make that tail a little bit wider and nicer looking. And then I spend a bit of time on the claw, making that a bit more yellow, removing some of the noise and just also removing that funny looking halo around it with the clone tool. And after that, the image looks pretty good. So I just save it and then run a pro contrast and nick on it. And then here we got our beautiful final looking image. The whole process of fixing the wing and editing the file, if I do this in full speed, would probably take me maybe 10 minutes max. And I think I saved a pretty cool image now. Before that, this was just a throwaway image. And now with a little bit of trickery, I could actually salvage this and create a really awesome looking final file. What do you think about this kind of stuff? Is this something that you want to try to salvage some of your own images? Is this taking Photoshop too far for you? Let me know in the comments. I know this was pretty fast and I really just wanted to show you how you can do these things. And if you want to learn all about the layers, layer mask and how to do exactly that kind of stuff, make sure to check out my masterclass where I teach this to you in much slower pace that would basically be too slow to follow on YouTube. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and also give me a thumbs up. That really helps me with the algorithm. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.